Water-rich Lesotho is keeping thirsty South Africa alive, but the tiny landlocked country is paying a high price for it. We didn't anticipate that the dams here in Lesotho will bring the misery that is bringing. I see nothing of the better life that they promised us. If it were up to me, I would decide against building the dam. The need for water by South Africa remains high, and the source of such water remains the Lesotho Highlands Water Project. We have been able to uh, divert water uh, to South Africa, but we are limited by the quality of our environment. Back when the children were growing up, this was a beautiful and peaceful village. We looked out for each other. Nobody here went to bed hungry. But look what happens now. People don't trust each other anymore. It's just not the same. Here in Matabo Raisi's village, phase two of the Lesotho Highlands Water Project started three years ago. One of five dams is being built here to supply water to neighboring South Africa. The entire village has been moved to another location. The construction work hit us hard. They had promised us jobs. Our children are supposed to be earning something from this, but instead they're out of work. While other people and South Africans get the jobs, we go hungry. They also took our fields. The cornfields and grazing land now house construction workers. Far from leading to greater prosperity, the dam has brought misery for residents, driving 8,000 people from their homes. The water will flow to South Africa's financial hub Johannesburg, 400 kilometers away. For the 16 million people in the city and surrounding province, Lesotho's dams are vital and already provide 60% of their water. Since the project is financed with South African taxpayers' money, Julius Kleinhans has been monitoring it for a long time. He works for the organization Alta, which seeks to expose corruption and mismanagement. Urbanizations taking place and future development and expansion of business needs more water. And the problem is we are only very limited to the water that we have in South Africa. We don't have innovative technologies and circulated infrastructure yet to recycle water. And currently we highly rely on the Lesotho Islands Phase 2 scheme to provide future demands. It's one of the largest infrastructure projects in Africa and is supposed to benefit both sides. South Africa pays Lesotho nearly 70 million euros a year for the water, and Lesotho uses the dams to generate electricity for its population. The local project manager from the Lesotho Highlands Authority tells us that in five years' time, the dam wall will stand right here. 5,000 hectares of land will then be flooded. As we are all aware, these kind of projects would have social impacts and environmental impacts. And uh, we, as the project, have a number of uh, programs which had been uh, discussed and agreed with the communities uh, uh, as ways and means of uh, uh, mitigating against the laws of land and the laws of uh, um, grazing areas and production uh, land. Mutusi Sikwi heard exactly the same promises 24 years ago when the Katza Dam was built. All other dams feed their water into this reservoir from where it's piped to South Africa. Sikwi works for the Seanoli Legal Center. It's helping local people, like here in the village of Mapaleng, to now claim the compensation they were promised. <laughs> As everyone knows, you were severely impacted by the construction of the dam. Your rights have been trampled on. And we all know why your water springs have run dry. We had decided to use the money to get our village connected up to electricity. 
But the Development Authority has done nothing. We're still waiting for power in Mapaleng. They also promised us compensation for the loss of our homeland and the pain we had because of the resettlement. Some people here got injured during the move, but to this day, we have not received anything. The project was conceived by two undemocratic governments of South Africa, apartheid regime and the military a regime in Lesotho. Those governments did not have mandate from the people. They, 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 there is a need for the review of this treaty. The project is also threatened by massive soil erosion. The construction of the dams, along with overgrazing and climate change, mean that more and more soil is being eroded by the rain and ends up in rivers as sediment. In many places, only bare rock remains. Taole Tisele is a consultant for a national project that aims to protect Lesotho's rivers. Workers here are building low walls into the hillside to reduce the speed and force of rainwater runoff and prevent erosion. They also remove invasive shrubs that would otherwise wipe out endemic plants whose roots help to keep the soil in place. With the current erosion, the life of such dams would be fairly compromised, the lifetime, because in no time they will be more full of sediment than water. So this would be lost uh, investment. And therefore, we depend largely on biodiversity, the type of biodiversity that enables infiltration of water, uh, our original idea was to bring uh, down here, uh, which is this empty space. If we were to wait for 10 more years, there will be time where we would simply not be able to produce anything, and uh, then we become a failed state. In my opinion, we are at the brink of saving this or letting it uh, fall.